So let's enable port security on this network. On the switch, we don't have any port security currently enabled. So no port security has been configured on Gigabit 101. We've been told to enable port security on that port with a single command. So conf t interface Gigabit 101 switch port. Look at the options available to us. We've got this option, port security. Port security, enter. Notice what we told, this is a dynamic port. So we've got to firstly type switch port mode access to make this port an access port. And then we can enter our single port security command. What I'll do actually is just name the switch switch one per the diagram. So now show port security enter. We can see that port security has been enabled on this port gigabit 101. We can also see that the maximum MAC address count is one. In other words, only one MAC address is permitted. What is the action? The action is to shut the port down. So when a second host sends traffic onto the network, the port should be shut down. If we look at the interface, so gigabit 101, at the moment, we can see that this command shows us that port security is enabled. The status is secure up. Violation mode is shut down. Maximum number of MAC addresses is one. Look at addresses. No addresses have been learnt at the moment. So what I'll do is send traffic from PC1. I'll do an IP config slash renew. PC has received an IP address again. On the switch, show port security address. Notice we've now learnt about this address. It was dynamically configured on this port, Gigabit 101, that wasn't shown previously. Look at this interface, Gigabit 101. Port security is enabled. We've now learnt this MAC address. Maximum number of MAC addresses allowed is one. Total MAC addresses is one. Previously, we hadn't learnt about that MAC address. So last source MAC address was blank. Zero total MAC addresses were learnt. So that looks good. Show port security again. Maximum MAC addresses allowed on this port is one. Current MAC addresses is one. So let's see what happens when we use ipconfig slash renew on PC2. On the switch, we see some output. We can see that the interface was changed to down. Notice the DHCP request failed. In Packet Tracer, we can see that the interfaces have gone red. And we told that once again, the interface has gone down. So show port security. We can see that a violation took place. Action is to shut the port down. And that's what happened. If we look at the interface, this is the last MAC address that we saw. A violation took place because we went over the maximum number of MAC addresses permitted. Notice the port status is secure shut down. So show IP interface brief. This port has been shut down because of the violation that took place and the fact that the action is shut down. So again, maximum MAC addresses allowed on this port is one. Violation took place. Action is to shut the port down. So the port has been securely shut down because the violation mode is shut down. Again, that's because PC2 sent traffic into the network. So by default, how many MAC addresses are permitted? One is the answer. Verify that only the first host is allowed. That's what we verified now. What happens when the second host sends traffic? The port is shut down. Is the first host's MAC address written to the running configuration? The answer is no. 
show run shows us that port security is enabled on this port, but we don't see the MAC address of PC1. Show MAC address table will show us MAC addresses that the switch learns when the interfaces are up, but the MAC address is not written to the running configuration. So if I go back onto that interface and no shut the port, that port should go up unless there's a security violation that took place. No shut to the port, so I'll shut it down first actually, and then no shut it. Notice it's now come up. So I had to shut it and then no shut it. Don't forget to shut and then no shut the port to re-enable it. So show MAC address, table. What we should see is we should see the switch will learn the MAC address of PC1. Notice it's learned to the MAC address of PC1 on gigabit 101. Port is up. Show port security. Current MAC address is one. Maximum MAC address is allowed is one. Show run again shows us that the MAC address is not written to the running configuration. So if I save the configuration, and then reload the switch. What can happen is that a different MAC address could be learnt. So I'll set both PC1 and PC2 to use static IP addresses rather than dynamic IP addresses. And what you'll see happen is that the MAC address can change on that port because it's not written to the running configuration. So current address is zero, maximum allowed is one. If we look at that interface, no MAC address has been learnt. So now if I set PC2 to DHCP, what happens is this MAC address is learnt. So in other words, a different PC was able to send traffic into the network. The limit is still only one PC, but a different PC's MAC address was learnt. So show MAC address table shows us that PC2's MAC address was learnt on this interface. It's not written to the running configuration, but the problem with that is that we're not specifying which MAC addresses are allowed to send traffic. We're only limiting the number of MAC addresses on the interface. So if PC1 now started using DHCP and sent a message into the network, Notice the port goes down. MAC addresses are not shown. Show port security shows us that a violation took place because on this interface, this MAC address is now seen as a violating MAC address. Only one MAC address is allowed, but we're not specifying what that MAC address is. So in other words, what happens when the switch is power cycled? A different MAC address could be learnt. We are not restricting MAC addresses on the port. We are only restricting the number of MAC addresses allowed on that port. But anyone could plug a PC into that port, as long as they the first PC that the switch learns. If the switch reboots, a different MAC address could be learnt on that port, and the original MAC address could be seen as a violating MAC address.